So hello, my name is Brianna Sadler. I'm the Maker Lab Coordinator at Two Rivers Gallery, which is gratefully located on the traditional and unceded territory of the Clately Tanay. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. So today we are talking about the, the theme of story in our Maker Lab monthly makes. And I'm joined by two amazing artists in their own right, Margaret Tatey uh, and John Mark Bonnet. So before we get started, I'm gonna introduce you to both of those. So if you guys wanna unmute yourselves and Jean-Marc, would you mind saying hi? Hello. Awesome. And Margaret, do you wanna say hi? Sure. Hi everyone. Awesome. All right, so let's get started. Um, Jean-Marc, would you mind to get going first and show us what you made on the theme of story? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, this month, uh, I've been work, working on a, uh, kids, kids play structure for my daughter. Um, and it's going to be, she likes climbing and climbing the couch, climbing the trunk, climbing everything pretty much. So I've, uh, I've looked online for a lot of, uh, play structures. They're quite expensive. So I decided to make one. Um, so it's this this one you're you're seeing right now is a simple structure has kind of a ladder section in the ramp, and uh, what we what we did to include the theme of story was the uh, on the climbing ramp we decided to make um, cutouts that kind of tell a story. Um, so the the rock climbing holds kind of tell a story. Um, so here you can see it. Uh, it's the story of bees, um, and as you can see, the bees obviously pollinate the flowers, they go to the hive, grow the hive, and then out come fruit. A little story, nothing, nothing uh, too mind-blowing, but uh, for, for uh, Joelle, my daughter, she, it's, pretty, it's pretty nice to say, okay, grab the flower, grab the bee, grab the fruit and eventually one day she'll get the story, <laughs> get the whole story. Um, so this project, me and my wife worked on it. So I built the ramp, my wife built the, um, um, the cutouts and uh, stained them. So it was a joint effort, joint family effort too. Um, uh, quite fun to make, so yeah. That is so cool. Like it's really, like I I don't I don't know what else to say. Like that is just really cool. Um, so how did you come up with the story of bees? Like, is there a significance behind that? Uh, we, we were just sitting on the couch one night and we we're trying to think of something fun and uh, yeah, uh, too complicated to make and something with fun shapes. I know in the climbing jibs, uh, there's always rock rock climbing holds that are you know, very, very fun, like, uh, so you could see like a frog face or uh, a snake or something like yeah. that. We're kind of thinking of the same thing. Uh, something, something, a shape that wouldn't have too many edges. We can make round and uh, easy to cut out on our uh, saws at home. So. That is really, really cool. I love it. Thank you. Um, no, um, I know a bit about your background that you are a sculptor and a designer in your own right. Do, would you mind telling everyone just a little bit about what you do? Sure. I'm a, uh, my full-time job is a mechanical engineer. Uh, I, I work in design, so I work with uh, designing military shelters. Um, but most of my part time is uh, dedicated to Sculpting, sculpting, making wood products, uh, but definitely my main uh, pastime right now is uh, sculpting. So um, what I, I do is I make uh, small coat hooks and I sell them uh, online and through actually the art gallery. Um, but I usually work in a different, different types of clays. I cast them, uh, I mold them, and then I cast them so I can reproduce and uh, sell them. So yeah, I guess my design background kind of helps in all that and um, 
I do like the creative aspect of uh, sculpting and engineering. So mixing the two uh, is a fun, uh, fun thing to do as well. Yeah, my mom is actually quite taken with your hooks and has bought a few. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So we have a few that are hanging up in our house. Um, and I love your the way that you actually make it. So you sculpt it with clay and then you'll uh, let that harden and then use like a silicone to create some kind of mold on top of it. Um, and then pour like a harder plastic with metal components in it so that it has a beautiful kind of metallic sheen to it. Uh, quite beautiful. Um, if I'm remembering correctly. <laughs> no, that's like, that's exactly the it. Uh, I just posted a video on how I make it. Oh, uh, wow. On my website and Facebook, so. If you wouldn't mind sharing your website, I'll share it with everyone that is watching. Uh, sure, right now? Yeah, like if you just wanna, <laughs> even if you let me know, is it just www.jeanmarc? Uh, yeah, Jean-Marc Bennett. Um. Okay. Margaret, do you have any questions for Jean-Marc? Um, I'm really just taken with the practicality of that clip play gym as well. The, the idea that it'll fold flat to be set away if it needs to be. Mm -hmm. I wish it did, but it doesn't fold flat. Not quite? Okay. Um, there's actually a, a, middle, a middle part that I'm working on. It's like, I call it the boomerang. Um, which allows even more uh, flexibility in climbing routes. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a my my boomerang work in progress, though. So. <laughs> I find it quite interesting that you have a theme of animals in pretty much almost everything you do. Is there a reason for that? Uh. Oh, I think they're fun. I think animals are quite fun, and uh, there's lots of uh, lots of good resources for oh, lots of pictures on the internet about animals, and it's always fun to get. You go on a hike, you get inspired by animals that you see around you. Like for for example, a slug. There's slugs everywhere in the forest, but you don't see that many uh, slug sculptures or slug things that you can put on the wall. Uh, so things that Animals that have nice, you know, a lot of animals have textures that you don't really recognize. And it's fun to really dig down into a certain, uh, certain animals. I mean, the, the mammals are hairy, so it's, it's, that's an also fun to make the fur kind of pop out and, you know, pop out on, on the joints. And anyway, there's, there's uh, fun aspects to every uh, creature out there. Yeah, and I know that there's like a lot of personality that's often associated with animals. Um, I always think about like, well, we all know the cartoon Zootopia, um, which I actually quite like. It's a good cartoon, uh, but the sloth and like everyone thinks they're just slow and, you know, there's the personalities that are often associated with those kinds of things. Oh, anyway, it's just thoughts in my head. Yeah. This year's bestseller is definitely the Sasquatch. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think we can talk about a lot of reasons why it might be big, tall, and mysterious, you know? Yeah. yeah or looks like everybody's favorite uncle coming out of quarantine. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> true. Yeah. A friend of mine actually made a Sasquatch drawing with a massive um, bun in their hair. It was it, like one of those you know, man buns. Um, it was funny. And it just reminded me of like people that I see. Right. <laughs> Anyways, awesome. I really, really love your piece. I think it's really interesting. And I highly recommend anybody who's watching, I've linked John Mark's website into the comments on Facebook. Please go check out his work. Um, we have it for sale here at Two Rivers Gallery some amazing hooks and some really lovely pots that he has made. So, yeah. Thank you. I, I love it. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we move on to Margaret? Um, mm, no, I guess. I, mean, okay. I, I guess the, the ramp I made, you know, yeah. 
it does need a few tools. Um, yeah. Which would typically be available at Maker Lab. So yeah. if anybody's looking to build one and doesn't have the tools, they can do that. Uh, um, and money, if anybody needs drawings, then I can give them some drawings I made up. That's awesome. Well, when we have your shapes. <laughs> when Maker Labs open again, I'm sure we're going to be like knocking on your door and saying, can you bring in the playpen so we can take a look and other people are going to be asking, how do you make this? Um, no, I know it's a, it's, it's been sad when we haven't been able to have people in to actually use the tools that we have, such as like the laser cutter and the bandsaw and the 3D printer. Right. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> well, I hope Joelle gets tons and tons of amazing use out of that. And I, I'm sure she thoroughly appreciates her parents making this crazy jungle gym <laughs> play thing for her. Yeah. It, I don't know. It doesn't beat the putting the her bed mattress just on a teeter totter and having her play. So <laughs> maybe later. It's too young. Maybe eventually. <laughs> Well, in a few years, she can help you with the design. Yeah. Yeah, you're starting her young, thinking about those things. It's great. Um, Margaret, hi. <laughs> Mine is not nearly so glorious or spectacular. In fact, it got a mention last time during the, the monthly showing when Maureen was talking about um, something that she purchased from me a few years ago for Lily. Mm because these little cosmetic cloths that I've been making for the last several years were more or less where this story started. So mm. they're just tiny little hand knit dish cloths. I used a dishcloth pattern to make them mm -hmm. on, well, not very large knits. Oh, wow. But they're my hell of against consumerism. Mm -hmm. Basically, I act that you'll buy the two to five dollar sleeve of the cloths and use them once and throw them away. Just mm -hmm. take your makeup off, you never think about it again. And one goes in the garbage, and another one goes in the garbage that night, and another one goes in the garbage the next morning. And over time, that adds up. Yeah. So I started using leftover yarns from weaving projects from another weaver in the fiber arts guild because when she got to the end of her warps, she didn't always want to use all of the orts that were left over on all the tubes. And they're a perfect small project. You can make multiples of them when you run out of one yarn, just add in another. And these ones are the ones that I've made that are in fact the same size as one of those disposable cotton pads. Or near enough to the same size that they're functionally the same. Very cool. I don't like throwing stuff out if I don't have to. Absolutely. Yeah. That makes sense. So is this, um, is this something that's like a passion project of yours that you've been like really, cause I know in like recent years, you've also been very concerned about like, um, the water, like your, not necessarily your water consumption, but what houses your water and things like that. So this kind of environmental kind of shift. Well, water use is part of it. And of course, landfills are part of it. The problem is, but they always keep saying, and it sounds trite, but there is no planet B. And so all of these sustainability things are that I take seriously. Yeah. And sure, you use slightly more water washing these over and over, but is it more than what's required to produce the cotton ones in the first place that you're throwing out? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's because pretty... what I'll do is have a bunch of them and then they just go through the laundry. I mean, it's an interesting like kind of conversation to bring up too, right? This kind of um, disposable world that we live in and how do we work within that? And I know that a lot of people have been really trying to push towards a sustainable uh, practice within everything that they do. Um, so like the makeup removers like you're using and then uh, the using our own water bottles and other components like that. and. It's a conversation I think we always need to have <laughs> and always bring up because you're right, there is only one world. There is no second chance. Um, yeah. 
I really like the colors that you have chosen too. This is just a variegated yarn that it came out in these colors because that's the color order in that particular yarn. Mm -hmm. um, it's what I happened to have. The current one is actually um, purple and singles linen. So it's a very dark purple, but it's coming out a little bit lighter with the linen. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very and cool. I'm just knitting in, knitting in little fans to make the circle and then sewing up the seam. I, I can't imagine. I, I, I knit as well, and I've never been able to knit that tiny. That's insane, too, for me. <laughs> you get used to it. Yeah. Jean-Marc, do you have any questions for Margaret? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just amazed how small those are. I know, right? <laughs> my wife uses like a few millimeters big, but that's up. tiny. Yeah, they're actually one and a quarter millimeter knitting needles. Oh, yeah. It's insane. It's insane. So the stitches are not large. I think uh, I think it's a great idea to make, make stuff instead of buying stuff. It's always a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, do you make anything else that uh, I guess I know we have homemade uh, knit uh, dishcloths and rags and stuff like that mm -hmm. that we use for scrubbing and that lasts yeah. forever. So yeah. and one of the things that got me thinking about it was when Maureen went on a vacation. She went to India. I can't remember if it was just on holiday or for a wedding that time. But she came back and she had some gifts for some members of the guild. And one of the things she gave Thanks. me was just was a, a bath towel purchased from a street vendor. Mm. And so it's just this hand spun, hand woven chunk of fabric that doesn't even have a sewn end. They've just woven it in in such a way that it doesn't really fray. Mm. And so I've been using bath towels in the rotation with everything else. Mm -hmm. Because textiles are meant to be used. Yeah. That's their whole purpose. The people that buy a really, really beautiful, you know, dish towel from a hand weaver and then stuff it in a drawer are missing the point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's true. Using and textiles are meant to be the used. point. Yeah. Oh, I feel the same way. Textiles are definitely meant to be used and I love the feel of them and holding them and things like that. And that's why I appreciate the intricacy of what you do, like this kind of detail with anything woven and textile based, right? I think it's beautiful. And fun and everything. Yeah, my other project this month has been um, the hospital auxiliary at some point posted that they wanted hats for the maternity ward. So I've got a couple of them started. I had some more lying around, so why not use it? So I'll tell you a story on that, John Mark, um, with her hat, the preemie hats or the little hats that she's making for the maternity ward. Um, and how quick Margaret is at these kinds of things. <laughs> this is this is her love. She does this kind of stuff. Uh, so we had a meeting last week for the volunteers and we were talking and the meeting's usually around 40 minutes. I think she started in on the meeting and then pretty much by the end of 40 minutes, she had finished a hat. It was just completely, she had started making one. Button. You would grab the yarn and you were knitting. Sorry. Yeah, as far as the decreases. I didn't get the whole thing done. I got as far as the decreases. So I made it to go. about this section. <laughs> That's how fast she knits. It's it's pretty <laughs> intense. It's pretty intense. It's good. You're just surrounded by. Uh... My studio is kind of piled up behind me. <laughs> <laughs> you need a hat. You need a hat. I've got another loom over here. <laughs> But this is the spirit of Maker Lab, right? Like this kind of, um, everything is everywhere. We do everything, it's multidisciplinary. We're always kind of chatting with each other, interacting. Uh, that's what I like about this place is like doing that kind of stuff. Um, so I'll, I'll go next, <laughs> unless there's any more questions for Margaret. Um, and in the spirit of what Maker Lab is and problem solving, I will say that mine is not finished because <laughs> I really did try. I tried so hard to finish this. 
I have not had a lot of time this month. Um, but it, I did put it together. It just, mm, okay. So I'm going to show you guys. I made a book. So I, I love making books. This is one of my passion things that I do. I make a lot of books. Um, and I cut out the material. I cut out some book board on the laser cutter. Um, I covered it with leather and I engraved an image on the leather with the laser cutter, if you could see that. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a fence post. Um, and then I used some beautiful paper from the inside. I folded my signatures, I stitched them. But this is the thing. You guys see that? <laughs> My paper is too big for my book and it doesn't fit in properly. And it's one of these things that just really, really bugs me when I make books that sometimes this happens because I will make the book before I have the paper or I fold the paper after I've made the cover. Um, so this is, has to go back to the drawing board. But on that note, I did, I'm going to share my screen here. Um, so I did actually, let's see here, sorry. All right, so I did actually um, kind of took videos of me using the laser cutter. So this is like one of the tools that we have at the Maker Lab. So it's really kind of cool that you brought up, that up, John Mark. Um, and I actually videotaped me engraving this and I thought this is going to be so cool people are going to see a finished product and some of the cool things that you can use the laser cutter for um but you know we always have to we always go back we always have problem solving things to do we always have to try to figure out what are what they are that's the wrong picture um but this is kind of what it looks like folded with the engraving and that's what it looks like folded out. Yeah. So that's my piece. It still needs work, which I guess is part of the story. Um, <laughs> but I made a book so that I could make a story and I can continue on with a story, but it's not finished. There we go. Yeah. How is the paper? held in the book so the paper's held by um you can see it inside there there's supports right here and then on the back end i'm actually going to rip it apart because i'm going to be ripping it apart anyways and fixing it anyways but i did a stitch inside oh yeah so that's kind of like the stitch that you do inside. So this is actually a Coptic stitch on the bottom. Um, and then I just kind of brought it through so that I would have a space for supports to be there so it can glue underneath. So some of the ways, like you can also do this by actually sewing in that into your front cover, but I decided not to because of like the image that was there. Um, but if you look inside the book, so you have three pieces like the two front and back covers and then the spine in the center. And that allows it to fold over. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And those inserts are wood or cardboard? Or so like... this is made out of mat board. Mat board. Yeah. yeah. But you can also make it out of like a bunch of different things. Uh, book board itself is cardboard, but it's actually a very heavy cardboard. Uh, so that, and I don't have any example of that around me, um, but it's, it's quite a heavy cardboard and it's used in all different types of bookmaking. Yeah. I might I have mean, some, but I'm not sure if I want to dig it out. I might make a bit of a noise going looking. It's all good. The thing is, is like, I, I come to books very naturally. I quite like them. I've been learning them since I was a kid. Uh, my aunt actually taught me some book binding when I was like 16. I think I talked about this last week as well. Um, but like, I, I find them interesting. There's something beautiful about making a book because uh, you have like this finished product at the end um, that is usable. 
And I always have drawn to like the crafts and the arts and stuff like that, that are, that are usable. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my piece. Uh, it doesn't look like we have any questions from the audience. Um, no, but it's okay. Do you guys have any questions more for each other that we haven't answered? No. I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's okay. Not a lot of people going to have questions about knitting, even tiny knitting. That's <laughs> it's all good. Well, I really appreciate you guys joining me for this month's Maker Lab Monthly Make. Um, next month, it will be on April 29th that everyone meets. Uh, and the theme for next month is analog. So it is uh, apparently International Analog Day or Computer Day or something like that next month. Um, so we have chosen analog as our theme. And you can take that whatever way you want to. You play the soundtrack on an a old uh, record player. Yeah, exactly. Do some performance art with a soundtrack and a record player. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Better yet, if you can find some gramophone. <laughs> Very true. Awesome. Well, again, if we have no more questions, I'm going to say goodbye. And I really want to say thank you, everyone out there, for joining us and for Margaret and for Jean Marc joining us. Again, Jean Marc's website is in the comments. Please come check out his stuff at the gift shop. Um, and yeah, I hope you see everyone at Maker Lab monthly make next week, next month, um, and then eventually at Maker Lab in the future. Okay. Bye, everyone. See ya. Have a good night.